Greetings, friends. Good morning, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health issue that is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system it's a regenerating system it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis and while some folks may call that healing renewing regenerating system a miracle it really is just the way the body works if you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs we are here for you we welcome your calls on the bright side. Let us help you change your life today. Let us help you change the lives of loved ones today. Give us a shout. Our number today and every day on the bright side is 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, nutritional supplementation, something you may have heard about, read about, something somebody may have told you about, we can help you understand how to use nutrition, what nutrition is about, and what skincare is about as well. We've been talking about skincare here now for a few months. We'll continue talking about skin and skincare. 844 236 6010 is our number if you have questions or comments or if you want to share a success story. 844 236 6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products, you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com, or my blog, pharmacistben.com, or my new blog, criticalhealthnews.com, all of which we re update regularly with news stories as well as blog posts. You can also purchase longevity products right off the website. And if you like, you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Our number, 844-236-6010. We'll, we'll get your calls here. Uh, probably uh, try to get to them anyway in the second half, second segment, the back, uh, back end of our second segment. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible, 844-236-6010. Last we spoke, we we're talking about exercise and the nature of stress, the nature of leveraging stress, taking advantage of the stress response. As most people recognize, stress can potentially be a big problem, but at the same time, small amounts of stress are absolutely critical for growth, all growth. It's part of a tried or true aspect of physics that we talked about yesterday called complexity theory that mathematically, scientifically demonstrates that living systems evolve into more functionality. They basically become bigger and stronger and better when they're under stress. Small amounts of stress, small amounts of stress, followed by long, luscious rest. And what is stress? But destabilization. In fact, the word exercise actually means to destabilize, and exercise is what most of us think about when we think about stressing the body. Exercise is a type of stress in the body. Exercise is thus by nature destabilizing. It's why we hate it. And it's also why we love it. The body is designed to run best with a little bit of stress, a little bit of exercise, and the body will secrete and the brain will secrete happy hormones, pleasure hormones, opiates, endorphins, dopamine, all the good stuff, the stuff that makes us feel really good when we exercise. That way we're encouraged. The body encourages us to work out a little bit. And I said a little bit, and that's the key, a little bit. And all bodies benefit this way. Sick bodies, old bodies, young bodies, everybody, everybody's bodies benefit from a little bit of stress because all our bodies are really the same. And this idea that all our bodies are really the same is one of the most important and one of the most inspiring ideas in all of health. All bodies are the same. That means all bodies break down the same. That means all bodies heal the same way. If you've ever seen the bodies exhibit, it goes around, I think it's still going around the country. It was going around the country in different museums. They show you how bodies look like under the skin. 
Under our skin, our bodies all look the same. You can't tell if somebody was a man or a woman or a boy or a girl or young or old or black or white or whatever just by looking at the tissue underneath underneath the skin. Underneath the skin, we're all the same. The body breaks down the same, the body structure the same, all the parts are plugged in the same way, and all this means that healing is really generic. Breakdown is generic, and healing is also generic. One of the universal results of exercise is that we feel better when we do it, but one of the universal, another one of the universal aspects of exercise is that we all hate it. We hate it because exercise, by definition, involves discomfort, and we hate to be uncomfortable. Do you ever wonder why we avoid discomfort so much? What is it about discomfort that is something that we we got to stay away from? The need for comfort is not necessarily in our interest. The need for comfort keeps us from growing. The need for comfort keeps us from accessing the stress, the, the stress element that's associated with growing and getting bigger and getting better. There's a really cool book called The Power of Negative Emotion by Todd Cashton and Robert Biswas Diner. That's a kind of a weird name here. Uh, Biswas Dash Diner, B-I-S-W-A-S Dash D-I-E-N-E-R. And Todd Cashton, K-A-S-H-D-A-N, The Power of Negative Emotions. Really cool book. And it talks about how our negative emotions aren't necessarily a bad thing. And there's a chapter in the book called The Rise of the Comfortable Class, which talks about our addiction to being comfortable, the origins of comfort addiction and how this drive to be comfort, comfortable at all times doesn't necessarily serve us, especially when it comes to exercise. Because exercise is about discomfort. Exercise is about stress. Exercise is about destabilization. And the body's response to having its stability thrown off is to become better. It's to become more complex, to develop more fibers and mechanical structures, as well as the chemical components that keep us healthy and keep us strong, all in an effort to restabilize the system. So the body gets destabilized via exercise, and then it goes back into restabilizing via getting bigger and stronger and better. And it's this back and forth nature between stability and instability that keeps us growing, keeps us young, keeps us healthy. The body is always in this dynamic state of going back and forth. And in terms of our health, this back and forth can be thought of a cycling from break down to build up, to break down to build up, to break down to build up. The fancy way of saying build up in Latin is anabolism. The fancy way of saying break down in Latin is catabolism. And anabolism plus catabolism make up metabolism. Anabolism plus catabolism make up metabolism. Breakdown plus build up lead to the sum total of breakdown or build up, which is called metabolism. That's what our metabolism is. It's the sum total of chemistry in the body. And the most important thing to understand about this sum total of, of uh, chemistry in the body is that the body is always in breakdown mode and it's always in build-up mode. It's always doing both, and it's the bottom line that counts. When we're young and when we're healthy and when we're vital and we're strong, a little kid is in prime building mode, net building mode, net in the black, as I like to say. As we get older, not so much. We're net in the red. We break down, we're net in the red. If we're older, in a nursing home, convalescing, we're frail, we're net in the red, we're net breakdown. To exercise is to turn that equation around from net breakdown to net build up. Exercise shakes, shakes things up and then the body is forced to stabilize itself. As far as the skin goes, which is what we've been talking about here, this breakdown and buildup process can be exploited just as well as it can be inside the body. We can use this breakdown and buildup phenomena, how breakdown leads to buildup, catabolism leads to anabolism, to improve the health and the look of the skin. This is what is meant by exercising the skin. I'm not talking now about exercising the skin muscle. I'm talking about exercising the skin itself, improving the extrusions of fibers, the extrusions of moisture factors, and actually improving the growth and the development of new skin cells. Skin exercise is the prime way to keep your skin looking healthy and young, and there are lots of ways to do it. We'll talk about some of these strategies and we'll talk about some of the things that happen when you skin exercise when we come back from our break. And we'll take your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Hang tight. If you're on hold, we'll get to you here in a couple of minutes. Try to get to you 
uh, before we end our second segment. And if you'd like to speak to us, 844-236-6D10 is our number. If you have a success story you'd like to share, you want to contribute to the conversation, or if you have a question about health or nutrition or prescription drugs or the longevity products or formulations or skincare or skincare products, we can help you. For you guys interested in purchasing any of my Truth Treatment skin health products, head over to truthtreatments.com. Take a specially long look at the retinol gel made with 5% retinol. You're not going to see that anywhere. In fact, 5% retinol is actually an equivalent to uh, 0.05% retinoic acid, retin-A cream that you have to get uh, that you get in a pharmacy and you have re requires a prescription to get plus you get 25 percent premium vitamin c lipophilic fatty vitamin c in my truth retinol balm you can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com also check out the omega-6 healing cream as well as our true serum and truth balm all at truthtreatments.com if you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products, you can head over to brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and purchase products right off the website. You can call the Brightside Ben phone team as well at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. And ask them about joining the Brightside Ben team. Love to have you on my team and help spread the word about the importance of a good nutritional supplement program like the one designed by Dr. Wallach and all the folks at Longevity. Okay, we're talking skin, skin health. And one of the things that happens when you use skin exercise strategies, especially, uh, especially alpha hydroxy acids, which I love, glycolic acid and lactic acid. There's other ways you can you can stimulate the skin or turn the skin on. You can use di uh, you can use enzymes to do it. Papaya enzyme will do it. Meat tenderizer, which is made with a pa papaya enzyme. Uh, can do it. You can make your own meat tenderizer, papaya enzyme toner or mask by mixing in a little meat tenderizer with some avocado perhaps or maybe in some uh, some gelatin gel. You can make your own little gel uh, gel mask with some gelatin and some papaya enzyme. You have to do it pretty quickly because the papaya enzyme will break down the gel. Uh, and the gel might not even gel that well in the presence of papaya enzyme, but you can you can spread it on your skin. And you can get a nice stimulating effect. Anything you do to stimulate the skin, to to turn on the chemistry of the skin, is going to in effect exercise the skin, and it's going to upregulate or increase the production of all the good stuff, collagen and fibers and moisture factors and high hyaluronic acid. Love, love, love high hyaluronic acid. Talk about that here in a second. Most folks have heard of exfoliation. Certainly most women have heard of exfoliation. It basically means to remove skin cells. Ex meaning to remove, to, to get rid of. Exfoliate means to get rid of leaves. Folia means leaves or foliage means leaves. Back in the, back in the days when they were developing words or they inventing words and the days of ancient Rome perhaps, I guess that's when they were doing all these, coming up with all these words. They looked at the skin cells, the stuff that was flaking off in response to exfoliation as leaves, hence the term exfoliation, to remove leaves. And it's a reminder that the process of removing skin cells is a lot like pruning your leaves back on a tree or on a bush. We all know that when you prune the leaves back on a plant, the leaves grow back bushier. Thicker, fuller, that alone is a miracle. You think about it. We we get rid of cell we get rid of leaves and the leaves grow back bushier. Well the same thing happens in the skin. You get rid of cells and the cell grows back the skin grows back bushier. And what I mean by bushier is thicker and stronger and better. This is what exercise is all about. And it's an important idea when it comes to skin health, or for that matter, when it comes to the health of the body or any other living system, even though it is somewhat counterintuitive. In the same way that removing or cutting the foliage off a plant, uh, the leaves off of a plant doesn't make the plant less healthy, but rather increases the growth of the leaves and is actually beneficial. The same thing happens to the skin. I have friends who are physicians and dermatologists and skincare professionals, and they don't, they, don't, they don't recommend stimulating the skin or exfoliating the skin. They think it's harsh on the skin. Well, if you know anybody who doesn't recommend or doesn't suggest or doesn't think it's a good idea to exfoliate, they're basically telling you they don't think it's a good idea to exercise. And we all know that nobody would ever say that. Exfoliation is exercise in the sense that it stimulates the growth growth of things and it is a key, key, key thing to do. It's very, very important if you want to have healthy, beautiful skin. And who doesn't? One of the most important components of the skin that gets upregulated or stimulated when we exercise the skin with alpha hydroxy acids, glycolic acid, lactic acid, acetic acid, apple cider vinegar, lemon juice. There's so many different ways you can do this. 
one of the most important components that gets upregulated is a slimy, gooey, water trapping, electrically active substance called high aluronic acid, HA. We're going to spend a day or two talking about this. Super important substance. When it comes to hyaluronic acid, technically hyaluronic acid is a sugar. It's a polysaccharide. It's made up of two really neat little sugars. The long chain, poly means long or many. Polysaccharide is a long or many, many sugared structure. It's got lots of little sugar pieces strung together. And actually it's got repeating units. It's only really two sugar, two sugar units, and each of these two sugar units, these two sugar unit blocks, repeats itself. And these two sugars are really, really fascinating. We'll talk about those tomorrow. And right now I want to just tell you that hyaluronic acid is a long chain of sugars. It's made a long chain of sugar. It's made up of, of uh, repeating pairs of sugar, two very important sugars. We'll talk about that tomorrow. And hyaluronic acid is what gives the skin its springy nature. Because of its water trapping property, it allows the skin to have a sort of puffy nature. When we're younger, we got more hyaluronic acid and we've got thicker, beefier skin. As we get older, our hyaluronic acid levels decrease in the skin and our skin thins. That's why upregulating increasing hyaluronic acid is A, maybe the key strategy when it comes to fighting wrinkles and keeping the skin looking young and healthy. But it's much more. Hyaluronic acid is much more than something, just an ingredient for the cosmetic that improves the cosmetic appearance of the skin. Hyaluronic acid stimulates growth. The more HA you have, the better your cells are going to grow. Hyaluronic acid helps cells get nourished. Hyaluronic acid helps detoxify cells. And hyaluronic acid activates the electrical nature of cells as well. Hyaluronic acid, as I said before, is one of, if not the most important of the non-fatty or water-soluble components of the skin, and it is stupendously multifunctional, not just for the skin, but for the bones and for the connective tissue in the body in general. We'll talk about all of that tomorrow as we continue talking skin health, hyaluronic acid, and upregulating all the components of the skin to keep it healthy and young and beautiful for all the days of our lives. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got some lines open for you. Time to hit our phones. If you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get to, we'll get to our calls uh, here right now and then continuing through the next half hour. On the bright side, let's go to New Hampshire and welcome Brian to the bright side. Good morning, Brian. How you doing? I'm doing great, Ben. I, I, liked your, I love your monologue, as always. It's, Thank it's you. always incredibly informative. Hyaluronic acid is something I didn't know about. Uh, but, but I called uh, today in regards to my my friend who has who is been who's uh, 25 years old and has been having such bad acid reflux to the point mm. where he can't even hold down meals. That's terrible. He went to the doctor and then they said, "Well, you're going to have to go see a specialist." You're Did they tell him he had a hernia by any chance? See, that's what I that's what I thought at first, but it's not. They're not sure what the problem is, but I told okay. them. Well, but I wanted to go into apple cider vinegar and baking soda and try to give him a nutritional strategy. All right, hang tight. We've got to take a break, Brian. We'll address acid reflux when we come back, okay? And if you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. And we do have lines open for you, 844-236-6010. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Got lines open for you, 844-236-6010 is our number. Hang tight. If you're on hold, we'll get to you here uh, momentarily. If you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products, head over to my website, brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com. You can purchase products right off the website. You can also go to criticalhealthnews.com or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. If you're interested in checking out my truth treatment products, retinol gel, Omega-6 healing, uh, healing balm, truth serum, or truth balm, you can head over to truthtreatments.com and order products right off the website, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, we're talking to Brian, New Hampshire. Brian, you there? Yes, sir. All right, so you're, uh, let's talk a little bit of heartburn and acid reflux. The most important thing to recognize, Brian, and for everybody listening who's got acid reflux issues, that's when acid splashes back up. Uh, through the through the stomach, up the esophagus, tastes lousy, feels awful. Uh, first thing to recognize is it's not an acid problem. It is a sphincter problem. A sphincter is a little round circular muscle that opens and closes. You got them throughout the body, and there's a sphincter that connects the esophagus 
uh, to the stomach. So your food goes down the esophagus, there's this little kind of circular muscle that opens and closes. It opens when you eat and the food drops down in the stomach and then it closes when there's content, when there's food in the stomach and you're not eating. And the idea is that it closes so that as the stomach is juggling around and moving around and crushing up the food and the acid is being secreted, nothing splashes back up. However, occasionally, as many folks know, that sphincter loosens up and stuff splashes back up. So does that make sense so far, Brian? Absolutely. Okay, so it's not an acid problem, it's a sphincter problem. Now, of course, the medical model, in its infinite non-wisdom, will use drugs to suppress the acid. This is not smart. Why? Because acid's important. Yes, it's uncomfortable when acid splashes back up, but that's not a reason to shut down its production. This is just a, a classic example of what's wrong with the medical model. In an effort to suppress symptomology, it shuts things down. It, and that means poison. I, I use the term poison all the time. But that's what I'm referring to. It shuts things down. Now, if you have heartburn or acid reflux, it feels awful. It tastes awful. It's a miserable experience, and I've had it occasionally. I know it, I, it's awful. So if you have it chronically, and I can only imagine how that must feel, you're going to want a, a symptom, symptomatic treatment. So symptomatic treatments, prescription drugs, have their place for symptomatic relief. But in the long term, if you're using these things long run, you're going to run into big problems. Specifically, in the case of Prilosec and Nexium, you're not going to be you're not going to be able to absorb nutrients. Acid is important for absorbing nutrients, and you're not going to be able to digest your food. Acid is important for digesting food. The combination of lack of nutrition, of not being able to absorb your B complex and your minerals is going to be a breakdown in the body. It's going to be an inability of the body to get energized. It's going to be uh, an inability of the brain to stay healthy and the heart to stay healthy and the blood sugar system to process correctly. Not having enough stomach acid by suppressing it, either if you're suppressing it pharmacologically or if you're just not making enough stomach acid, is a big, big problem. And to artificially induce it with drugs is just crazy. Now, if you have a symptomatic problem, if you have a problem and you want symptomatic relief, I can relate, I can understand. But in the long run, you want to figure out why is that sphincter flabby and loose and not being closed correctly. And you'll always find that it has to do with the wrong kinds of foods and digestive health problems, especially around probiotics. When you have the wrong kind of bacteria in the gut, gases are emitted. That causes a, 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 a the sphincter to loosen up. The gases that are emitted causes a loose sphincter, and that also causes pressure upwards on acid, that can be a problem. Eating the wrong kinds of foods can be a problem. Eating when you're under stress or general stress can do it. So all of these strategies, all of these, all of these uh, mechanisms for, for acid reflux need to be addressed and can be addressed without doctors, without drugs. For first things first, you want to get yourself on the bio, Brian, for your friend, have your friend on the BioLumin Nightly Essence. Good bacteria in the gut are always where you start. And then secondly, you want to start to associate the splashback or the reflux symptoms with specific foods, and you will find that there are foods that your friend is having a problem with that are almost always associated with that splashback. He probably has other symptoms as well, uh, other digestive symptoms as well. So keep a food diary. Notice when he has the acid, and then write down what he ate, or just keep track of everything he's eating, and then link those to his acid symptoms, and then practice dietary or food elimination. For the most part, he's not going to have symptom uh, splashback or heartburn symptoms if he doesn't eat. So fasting is a great strategy, although when acid reflux becomes significant, and it can become significant over the course of time, even water can do it. So you don't want to get to that point. Before you get to that point, he wants to isolate specific foods and see what foods are causing or are related to the splashback symptoms, and then use probiotics or good, new, uh, or good probiotic supplement and fermented foods as well. Now, you mentioned apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is an interesting strategy because as it turns out, a lack of stuff stomach acid can actually loosen that sphincter. So a lack of stomach acid or deficiencies in stomach acid can actually cause splashback or cause reflux. So using apple cider vinegar, Brian, good idea. It may help them. So a lot of folks get benefits by using apple cider vinegar and digestive enzymes for that matter after meals. So using apple cider vinegar can help. If you're going to go the bicarb route, Brian, don't do it with meals or don't have your friend do it with meals because bicarbonate will neutralize the acid and he's going to have a problem absorbing his nutrients. And, and also, by the way, acid in the digestive tract is a protective mechanism for killing bacteria. So you run higher risks of food poisoning, et cetera, by suppressing acid, whether you're doing it with bicarb or whether you're doing it with a drug. So if he's going to use bicarb, 
Uh, have him use it a little. I don't even recommend that he uses sodium bicarbonate unless he's absolutely miserable, in which case have him wait a little bit uh, after he after he eats his meal before he does his sodium bicarbonate. And I don't even recommend that unless he's absolutely miserable, in which case it can be helpful. There's also something called mastic gum, M-A-S-T-I-C, that some people use. Mastic gum can be helpful. Um, there's also uh, something called DGL, which is an extract of the herb licorice that some people find benefit from when it comes to heartburn. So DGL or mastic gum, they, those are more uh, symptomatic strategies if he doesn't want to go the Prilosec or Nexium route. Does that help, Brian? It does. W- quick follow-up. Yeah. Um, would you say then that GER, G-E-R-D, um, when, I, when proposed to me, I suspected that it was a fic- fictitious kind of diagnosis. Um, and what was it? I didn't hear what you said. What was a fictitious uh, diagnosis? G-E-R-D. Oh, GERD. Gastro- yes, gastroesophageal reflux disease. That's the right. fancy way of, of talking about that splashback. They call it reflux. Go ahead. And I was, I was just curious, when would sodium bicarbonate or baking soda be a useful nutritional supplement? But uh, Sodium bicarbonate is secreted by the pancreas to help neutralize stomach acid. When you eat food, this is what's supposed to happen. When you eat a piece of food, it goes into the stomach and ac- it gets an acid bath, and then the uh, stomach grinds it up through mechanical processes. There's a lot of musculature in the stomach. And between the muscles of the stomach grinding the food up and the acid and the enzymes, which activate or the acid, which activates the enzymes, between those three factors, acid, enzymes, and muscular contractions, the food gets crushed up. And then once it's crushed up, it, and it forms a liquid. If you have enough liquid in the, in the food or you're drinking water with your food, you get this soupy, acidic mass and it drops from the intestine to the stomach. At that point, what's supposed to happen is the pancreas is supposed to secrete sodium bicarbonate into the intestine to neutralize the acid. However, if you don't, and, and that alkaline bath initiates more digestive juices, specifically bile. But if you don't have a fully functioning pancreas or you're not making enough sodium bicarbonate, that's not going to occur, and you're not going to get the secretion of bile in response, and you're going to have impairment of the entire digestive process downstream. So using sodium bicarbonate a couple of hours after you're eating can and support the pancreatic activity and support bile secretion later on or further on downstream. So a couple hours after you eat, that's the best time to do bicarbonate if you're going to do sodium bicarb. Thanks for your call, Brian. I hope we answered your question, buddy. Got to take a break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Hang tight. If you're on the line, our number is 844 Okay, we are back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking skin health and the health of the body. We're taking all your questions, whatever you have, or success stories, if not questions, or uh, if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. Tomorrow we'll continue talking skin health, and if you're interested in purchasing any of my True treatment products, including the retinol balm, which is one of the best ways to upregulate high hyaluronic acid, is using retinol. We'll be talking about that tomorrow. Head over to truthtreatments.com. Take a look at our retinol gel or our truth, truth balm or truth serum or our omega-6 healing cream at truthtreatments.com. RC in California. What's up, my friend? Long time. No C. What's going on? RC. That would hey, be ben. me. Hello, RC. Hey. Greetings. Hi. You know, I hey. went out and bought some pH strips, uh, you know, do my own testing, I guess. And okay. uh, for, for you know, uh, see whether my alkaline or acidic. What did you test? You, did you test your saliva or your urine? I did both. And okay. the saliva came back really like 775, and the urine came back like 6. I mean, different colors. That's not bad. That's not bad. You you want your saliva to be right around seven ish, and uh, urine five ish, six ish is good. You don't want it to go down Uh, too low though. You know, even you know up to seven, somewhere six, seven kind of thing. If your urine is the problem is when your urine is acidic, or your saliva for that matter is acidic. That's when you're really running into problems. Some people get their urine down to four or even lower. I've seen, and that's really where you're running into a problem where your body's trying to dump out acid. But you're doing good. Is that what you're asking? Is that what? And then what type of, uh, you know, foods or supplements 
can you take to, to lower your, I mean, uh, you know, make it You don't low. want it low. You want it high. Well, you want it in the middle pretty much if, as yeah, a general yeah. rule. Right around 7. The pH scale goes from 0 to 14. Most people know this. I'll just, just to reiterate, the pH scale goes from 0 at the most acidic to 14 at the least acidic or the most alkaline, if you will. And 7 is neutral. Uh, your blood needs to be right around 7.4-ish, a little bit less. I think it's 7.38, something along those lines. Just around, around 7.4 or so. Uh, and then uh, you want your saliva to be right around 7-ish and your urine maybe a little bit lower. The big, the big problem com comes from running acidic. Acid is a measurement of toxicity. Well, as the uh, metabolic processes of the cells proceed, they release acid. Acid is a byproduct of metabolism, and under healthy conditions, that acid will be eliminated. Acid represents speed and activity and dynamism. That, by the way, is why you want your skin to be acidic. The inside of your body, you want to be relaxed a little bit, but the outside of your body, the skin, interestingly, has to be acidic. So while 4.5-ish is where you want your skin pH to be, if that was the pH of your inside fluids, you'd be in big trouble. So inside the body, you want it to be slightly relaxed. When it runs acidic, you've you got a problem. So what do you do if you're running acidic? Well, you don't necessarily treat the symptom. You don't treat the measurement. That's the, that's the way medicine works. It treats the number. Right. You don't want to treat the number. You want to treat why the body is acidic, and that usually means it's not getting rid of toxins or you're accumulating toxins. The fastest way to raise the blood pH has nothing to do with what you drink or eat. It has everything to do with what you breathe, and oxygen is how nature designed us to, oxi uh, to alkalinize. You don't need anything fancy to alkalinize. You don't need to spend money on a fancy alkaline water machine or you don't have to buy alkaline water. Those are two fancy ways that uh, marketers tell you to alkalinize your body. You don't need any nutrients necessarily, although minerals are important. Oxygen is the best way to alkalinize. So sitting on the couch and practicing your deep breathing techniques. This is why deep breathing is so important. It, raises, it helps raise the blood pH. If you want to use minerals to do it, that can help not, not tremendously because if you're acidic because of toxicity, minerals aren't going to make that much of a difference. But from a nutritional standpoint, it's the minerals that raise the blood pH and using mineral supplements, using the cherry mints or the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, that would be the best way to nutritionally raise your, uh, raise your pH. But oxygen is, is, is the best way. Also, plain old water can help dilute acidity. So making sure you're drinking enough water, that can also have a positive effect on blood pH. Does that help? You know, one more, one sure. more. Oh yeah, thank you very much. One more thing. You know that last caller about the GERD. I started listening to you. I'd been on Nexium for about a, a decade, and uh, had the, I always had the reflux. And then I started listening to you, and after about two months, I, boom, I was done. The Nexium got thrown away, and I <laughs> nice. haven't had any problems since. Nice, RC. Good job. Congrats. And you look great, man. I saw you. When did I see you? A couple weeks ago or whenever I was out there in Santa Cruz. You look great. You look great. And you lost weight, it seems like, since, uh, since we, you and I have been talking. Right. You're just, you're just doing a great healthy. job. Good job, RC. Right, Thank man. you so much. Thank All right, brother. Much. Take care, man. Talk, take care. All right. That's my buddy, RC, in Santa Cruz. All right. Let's go to Jeff in Minnesota. What's up, Jeff? Welcome to the Bright Side. Yes. Um, I have a friend whose body's in distress. His tongue's broken out. They diagnosed him with pancreatic cancer last oh, week. Oh, I'm sorry. Still in pretty good pretty good condition as far as that goes. He's working. How, how old is your friend, Jeff? He's about 50. Oh, I'm so and sorry to hear that. Yeah, pancreatic cancer is, it's, it's the worst of all the cancers, and it's got the worst prognosis of all the cancers. The pancreas right. is a big bag of enzymes. That's its job, is to produce enzymes. It produces um, digestive enzymes and other enzymes. It's just a... Once the pancreas goes down and it starts to release its enzymes, that's where it's just an awful situation. However, people do survive pancreatic cancer as a deadly. It is the deadliest cancer, but people still survive it. You may want to have a, have your friend research a guy named Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez, who has done a lot of work on pancreatic cancer and worked with pancreatic patients pancreatic cancer patients, and he actually recommends using pancreatic enzymes to treat pancreatic cancer, and he recommends pancreatic enzymes for all cancers, but he gets a lot of good benefit from that, uh, from using pancreatic, uh, pancreatic enzymes, also digestive health strategies, the pancreas is largely a digestive organ, it also processes sugar, so using digestive strategies and using blood sugar stabilizing strategies, uh, and of course that means fasting, eliminating problem foods, and then using all his sugar, uh, anti-sugar strategies, uh, sweeties, magnesium, 
the amino acid taurine and arginine. Those can be helpful for processing sugar. Of course, keeping a sugar intake down to zero. Oh, we should so all healthy, have healthy start pack. Healthy would probably help them and out. the blood and sugar pack. And the blood and yeah. sugar pack would help fasting using pancreatic enzymes, making sure he's uh, he's. Uh, I would be researching Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez and then making sure he's using all the relaxation techniques we talk about on this program. The body heals under conditions of relaxation, not under conditions of stress. So activating the relaxation or parasympathetic nervous system is important using deep breathing techniques, massage, hot water, all the things we talk about for deactivating the stress response. Okay. Good, okay. okay. God bless, that Jeff. Good luck with everything. I hope that helps. Okay, let's see if we can get one more call in before we got to go. I, Eileen, oh, we lost Eileen. I apologize. I think I may have hung up on Eileen. Uh, Eileen, if you're there, uh, if you uh, if you're listening, call back and we'll see if we can we can get you in because now we got an empty board. I wanted to read this up. I found this quote. It's called "The Man in the Arena Speech." And it was from Teddy Roosevelt, and I think it's really cool. And it kind of talks about the notion of how stress and how discomfort can be a very important part of growth and a very important part of having a great life. And how when we're, un, when we're trying to accomplish something, there's going to always be a sort of hardness about it or un, discomfort about it. And other people are going to be critical. Other people are going to complain. But as this quote, as this uh, quote is from Teddy Roosevelt, a speech he gave in the 1920s, I believe, somewhere around there, uh, as this speech talks about, it doesn't matter what other people say. Quote, the man in the arena, quote, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat, unquote. And that's from Teddy Roosevelt's Man in the Arena speech. You can Google it. It's all over the Internet if you want to learn more. I love that idea. Who, uh, at the worst, if he fails, at least fails by daring greatly. I want to encourage you all out there. Dare greatly. It doesn't matter what anybody says. If you have a goal, if you have something you want to achieve, if you want to have a, a great life, dare greatly and don't worry about your critics. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena. All right, thank you for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Tomorrow we'll continue talking skin health and talk about high aluronic acid on the bright side. Please check out my website, brightsideben.com, if you want to purchase any of the longevity products or or uh, pharmacistben.com if you want to purchase any of the longevity products and truthtreatments.com if you want to purchase any of my truth skin health products. Have yourselves an awesome, spectacular, wonderful day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now. Oh,